This is Greg Troutline with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined again by Sylvain Julien, the Director of Naval Architecture at BMT, to discuss the innovative new passenger and cargo vessel designs for the Isle of Scilly Steamship Company. Sylvain, to start, can you give an overview of the 72 meter, 600 passenger ferry that BMT helped design for the Steamship Company with as much technical specification and insight as possible? Thanks, Greg. So, yes, BMT is uh, supporting the Isles of City Steamship in developing the new vessel. Um, so, from early concept all the way through technical support uh, during the build phase and delivery. Um, the, the first step of our work was to develop a set of uh, requirements based on the operational needs. This took the form of a discussion with the crew and shore team. Uh, we also surveyed the vessel and port infrastructure. Uh, to ensure that we have a, a good picture of, of their needs. Uh, as part of this work, we also started to review and incorporate uh, the wishes of, um, of the local community. Um, it, it, the Isles of Scilly Steamship operates a, a lifeline service between Penzance and, and the Isles of Scilly, uh, and they benefit from a very strong relationship with, with the local community. So it's really important for them uh, that the community's concerns and, and, and wishes um, are addressed through, throughout this project. Having agreed the, the requirement, we started to put on paper what the vessel would look like. Um, and, and this is, you know, I guess, the, the fun part, but it's also a, a very important step to ensure that softer requirements are captured. And you know, this can be things as simple as uh, a preference in terms of seating arrangement or, or snack bar layout. Uh, but it can also be aspect much more fundamental to the vessel operation. Um, for example, this may be ensuring that the design allows for uh, different cargo um, to be loaded and unloaded in a specific order uh, to mesh seamlessly with, uh, with the shore infrastructure. Um, this was also a great time to experiment with passenger lounge and, and external design. Um, the, the vessel being replaced, uh, the Ceylonian 3, um, is an iconic vessel uh, in the region uh, and it was really important to offer a design um, to, to the community that we both offer uh, improved passenger experience, but also uh, an extra design that truly showcase, um, yeah, I guess, their uh, uh, forward-looking vision. So, Sylvain, uh, can you discuss what precisely was BMT's role in this project? I guess we, we are uh, working um, hand in hand with uh, uh, the operator um, to try and, and make sure that um, they, they, they get a vessel that, that they need. Uh, I think for them it's a uh, you know, one in a lifetime um, fleet change. Uh, they are changing all of their vessel. Um, the Silent and Three was built in 1977, so you know it's a, it's an old vessel, um, but it still does very much the job at the moment. So we need to make sure that through the development process we achieve something that is better, and we are doing that for both this vessel and, and the cargo vessel. We also understand that there was a design for a 45 meter dedicated cargo ship to replace the Grimaritha. Uh, uh, can you provide some technical specification on that vessel? Yeah, so the Grimaritha uh, and its replacement will be a 45 meter um, cargo vessel. Um, we, we worked with the Isles of Sydney in a very similar way to, to support the new development. The focus here, of course, was very firmly on the logistic operation. Um, unlike the passenger vessels that only operates part of the year, um, the, the cargo vessel operates all year round and, and is the only freight service to the Isles of Sydney. So, um, I mean, it also offers a limited passenger service to up to 12 passengers, but this is very much the only link um, as they are by sea. Um, Although less glamorous than the passenger vessel, both the community and the Isles of Steel Steamship are, are very high expectation for this vessel because it's, uh, you know, it's very much the lifeline service. Um, a, a lot of work has gone into the design uh, to ensure that it meets these all year round uh, requirements uh, and also to ensure that it provides improved capability. Um, they have tried in the past to, to replace the vessel and this has not um, worked as well as they wanted, uh, so it's really important to get this one right. In looking at this uh, this contract and these two new vessels, what were the demands from the clients? Specifically, what did they want that they currently don't have? Um, so for, for the passenger vessels, the main requirements were about uh, vessel reliability and, and, and passenger experience. Um, 
the, the potential green credential of the design were also at the very center of the discussion. This is something that is really important uh, generally for, for the eyes of the city. Um, the vessel is constrained in its, in its dimension uh, by the size of the tidal gate and the water depth available at the harbor. So without room to grow, the vessel layout is balancing uh, is a balancing act between the space requirement of each of the vessel's functions. So uh, we are here talking about uh, passenger space, cargo space, uh, crew, machinery, and all of these good things. One of the key aspects of the design is the introduction of a, of a completely different passenger space compared to the existing vessel, uh, much more modern, um, uh, to allow for an increased passenger uh, number but also to provide uh, improved external views to ensure a better passenger experience, um, which is really important um, for all the party involved. Uh, to further uh, improve the passenger comfort, the vessel motion will be uh, dampened by a, a motion stabilization system. Uh, the vessel is, is regularly taking the ground as part of its normal operation, um, and we're currently evaluating different stabilization systems to allow for this to happen um, safely. The cargo capacity of the, of the passenger vessel was uh, also looked in conjunction with the cargo vessel capability. Um, during the summer months, both vessels work hand in hand to support the Isles of City and, and the, you know, the tourism industry, which is really important to them. Uh, and this work has led to some changes to the balance of capacity between vessels uh, compared to existing arrangements. Um, so for the new uh, 45 uh, meter cargo vessel, um, the reliability is also very important, but um, um, the cargo part and it's currently at need to be uh, updated. So it is also limited in, in its dimension. Um, and therefore we have worked toward a, a modular cargo layout um, to handle the, the, the variation of cargo type during the year. So um, during the winter and during the summer, the, the amount of cargo by tab is very quite a lot. Uh, in particular, there is increased capacity for frozen cargo that was required without compromising the uh, overall layout. Um, in order to uh, achieve operation improvement compared to the existing vessel, um, so this really looked at um, taking a French look at, uh, at cargo design. Um, and in particular, we optimize some, you know, with some unusual features such as a, a, an asymmetric superstructure to allow for a quicker and safer operation of, of crane operation. Obviously, as you know far better than I, fuel consumption and emissions are top tier concerns for any ship owner today. Can you go into detail on the propulsion packages and fuel options selected for both vessels? Yeah, so for both vessels, we, we have looked at uh, many options, including alternative fuel, um, propulsion system configuration, um, a variety of propulsors options as well. Uh, based on economical, practical consideration, uh, but I guess also strong desire shared by, by both Steamship and, and, and its community to, to deliver an environmental solution. Um, the various options were down selected um, and, and a, a hybrid configuration for both vessels um, was selected. So, in practice, this takes the form of a, a, a mechanical propulsion system. Um, so, here you're talking about the traditional shaft and, and you know, um, the propulsion and diesel engine. And, and this system is, is then supported by an electric motor that can also act as a, as a generator. And this electric side is then coupled to um, an energy storage solution, batteries. So this, the system makes um, the best use of each part uh, of the system to reduce fuel consumption overall. From, from an emission perspective, the system uh, uh, benefits are twofold. Um, first, it allows in, in a commercially sustainable way, because that's, that's important to, to be uh, emission free at key. Uh, this is a concept of uh, cold ironing, uh, but also to be emission free during harbor approach and, and, and maneuvering. So the vessel rely on its battery um, energy storage to, to power the vessel. The, the second benefit of, of the system is that it provides a, a, an energy system architecture that is suitable for future upgrades as technology and, and, and in particular shore infrastructure develops. So the aim is to allow the vessel to continue you know, um, enlarging its emission-free part of, of its operation uh, throughout the life of the vessel. Can you give us a status on the shipbuilding project today? Where are they at? 
Right, so there, there has been a, a lot of excitement. So they, they have announced um, publicly the, um, the, the two different concepts for the cargo and the passenger vessel. Uh, and that's really important to make sure that they've got the support of the community for that. Um, it has been generally extremely well received. Um, so beyond that, there is a, an expression of interest that has been sent to uh, shipyards, uh, and shipyards have answered um, that. So the next step is for the eyes of CB Steamship Group to down-select shipyard uh, to go to the next step, both in terms of design and, and you know, ultimately a, a build contract.